nobody is perfect and no leader is perfect and uh, all of us know what it's like to be disappointed in our leaders and uh, specifically when they uh, fail to be responsible with their authority and with their responsibilities. Uh, and on the flip side, when we are entrusted with leadership, sometimes because we are uh, not perfect, uh, we fail to be responsible with our uh, authority and with the things that God has entrusted to us. I want to share more about this after the scripture reading. First Kings chapter 21 verses 1 through 16. Some time later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth, the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or, if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. So Ahab went home, sullen and angry, because Naboth the Jezreelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. He lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel his wife said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name placed his seal on them and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But seat two scoundrels opposite him and have them testify that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city did as Jezebel directed in the letters she had written to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you. He is no longer alive but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Uh, there is a lot going on in today's scripture passage. I want to focus on just one verse, verse 8, uh, speaking about Jezebel, the king's wife. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. So there's a lot going on in this passage and uh, history will remember Jezebel as a very, very evil and wicked woman. And she will have a very ugly end and a very graphic uh, death uh, because of the sins she committed and the sneaky ways and the evil things that she did. But the drama starts here and... Yes, Jezebel is very much guilty, 
but King Ahab is guilty as well. And all this terrible uh, chain of events, all this drama begins when King Ahab allows his wife Jezebel to take his authority and to write letters in his name with the authority of the king of Israel, which is Ahab. Uh, in other words, King Ahab creates this uh, leadership vacuum where he's a sinful man, he wants something selfishly, but he won't get it. And his wife sees the opportunity and she steps in. And he allows her to take full control. Uh, if he acted like the king that he was supposed to be, if he kept his authority, if he did not relinquish his authority to another, all of this would not have happened. But he was sneaky as well because it was for his benefit. He wanted the outcome. So he just let go and he allowed his wife to do all these terrible things in his name for his personal benefit. <clears throat> you know, this, this is funny because she wrote a letter in his name and it made me think about specific issues, moral, ethical issues that are kind of gray area. For example, uh, many busy people are asked to write recommendations for people applying to school and jobs and scholarships. And it's common practice for those busy people to ask someone below them in their organization to write the letter for them and they'll just sign it and mail it out. Uh, and busy people as well, not just recommendation letters, many letters are written in their name that they've never written and they just sign off. Even they have their subordinates sign, sign them off and sign papers for them and um, their, their staff does many things for them in their name. Where do we draw the line? Somewhere and sometime we need to draw the line where people need to own what their signature says and the letters that are written in their names. Um, a huge issue in the Christian world uh, is ghostwriting because a very famous Christian leader um, in many of his writings he didn't actually write it so there was a quote unquote ghost writer and he didn't give proper uh, recognition and footnoting and citing to the original authors and there is a huge anger from evangelicalism saying Christian men and women those of you who are gifted and entrusted to write put, put your name on it only if you wrote it do not accept ghost writers have integrity do not be like the world you know God has given all of us certain sets of responsibility and authority and we need to be responsible to own up to that authority, to take ownership of it and say, the buck stops here, I'm in charge. And we can't relinquish that authority and create this vacuum. Uh, personally, God has called me to be the husband of my wife and I will not relinquish those responsibilities to another. God has called me to be the father of my children and I will not relinquish those responsibilities to another. God had, has called me to be a pastor to my congregation. I, I confess, sometimes I get tired and weary and worn out and I want to pass on those responsibilities to other people. But even with that, if God has called me to do it, I need to take ownership of it. And I do not want to create a leadership vacuum where others will step in. Um, here in this passage, literally all hell will break loose in the next few chapters because King Ahab failed to be a responsible man, a responsible leader who took ownership. He refused to take ownership of his 
responsibilities, of his authority, and he let someone else take over and run wild with it. I hope that you and I, whatever it is that God has called us to be responsible over, that God has entrusted leadership and authority unto us, whatever it may be, we need to take full responsibility and own up to our authority and take ownership of it and under God's guidance do a good job. And I hope that we will not make the same mistake in letting others run wild with our responsibilities and with our authority. Whatever it is that God has entrusted to us, to you, to me, whatever responsibility, whatever authority, uh, let's really pray for the strength to do a good job and to fulfill our responsibilities. Let's pray. Lord, give us great strength. Though we are imperfect, we ask that you would cover our imperfections and weaknesses and uh, allow us to be strong and allow us to um, be responsible with the authority and the responsibilities that you have entrusted to us. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen.